Good afternoon. I um, first of all, I'm happy to be here. I've never been to uh, ITS before, so this is my first time here. Um, it was supposed to be a 20-minute discussion, uh, but when I was listening to the competition ahead of time, they said no, no puppets, um, and uh, so that took about five minutes away. And then over this weekend, I watched. Uh, you guys had Dave Chappelle here. Um, uh, and so I won't be using any of that material uh, either. Um, but, but I really am excited to be here. I've been, uh, again, my name is Dean Sievers. I've been president of National Grid for two years. So that makes me a newbie. Uh, clearly, as I look across the spectrum of folks in our business and in this industry, you know, that makes me uh, uh, an infant in this space. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is just give you a quick backdrop in terms of some of the things that I've done. Hopefully that will be germane to both the industry and germane to what we're going to talk about over the next couple of days. So the prior 15 years, I actually spent in the life safety uh, business. Uh, so I thought what we did was pretty important. And in that 15 years, I ran some large international services company companies. And for a, about three years, I ran a large manufacturing uh, and technology company in that space. The reason I bring that up is because all those businesses were customer-centric uh, in terms of what we focused on. We had to understand who our customer uh, is or was and uh, sort of how you created value uh, for those customers because ultimately there were also businesses that had to compete. Uh, and so um, to me that's the backdrop for how I came on board to National Grid a couple of years ago because most of what I did in the life safety space was turnaround businesses. And so the overly simplistic questions that I always ask when I come in uh, to a business is, how do you make money? Who are your customers? What do they value? And then where is the industry uh, going? So for me, as I think about that, I think about what I know and what I didn't know. So I've been a utility customer all my life, so I came in with that perspective. And so from that perspective, you know, I've been flipping switches like everyone else. Uh, all my life, you know, the lights come on, the heat goes up, or the air conditioning uh, cools the room down, and at the end of the month, I would get a bill, probably a bill that I didn't understand, and throughout my life, a bill that someone, whether it was my grandmother, my mom, and frequently my wife now, complains about um, the size of that bill. Um, so I've had that perspective uh, coming on board. But, you know, sort of as we listen to customers in the space, and as I was doing my onboarding to National Grid and listening to customers, you know, thinking about that, when you say the lights always come on and the heat always flows, you know, the message I got that resonated with me when you think about that was one around reliability. You know, our reliability is something like 99.99996 or something like that in terms of always being on. Clearly in the other spaces that I worked in, we didn't have that kind of reliability. And not only do our residential customers come to um, depend on that, but as I've talked to commercial customers up and down our region, and what's important to them, it is that reliability, but it's also the power factor. You know, it's the power factor that says, if I lose power or if I get fluctuations in my power, I lose my production cycle. That production cycle not only costs me millions of dollars, but also it allows me to disappoint my customers. So for us as a business, we've been taking those messages and really driving both reliability, but driving getting closer uh, to customers. Um, the point for me, and these were epiphany points for me over the last two years, you know, we've had a relatively quiet winter in the Northeast. Um, I moved from Florida, Florida, so I always say relatively quiet winter, uh, but it's been quiet except for the last two weeks. We've had four storms in the last two weeks that whether it's been high winds that I don't know, we're close to hurricane uh, speeds or uh, lots of snow or a combination of both. Up and down our region, we had anywhere from 7,000 customers out of power to 170,000 customers out of power. And what I saw is what I've been seeing over the last couple of years is the national grid machine come together and people step outside their functions and sort of the women and men of national grid sort of, you know, take the weather and, and, and shove it aside and really get out there and put our customers uh, back, in, back in business and back in power, all within 24 hours, but in most cases within an hour or two. And so while that may be you know, old news of you, someone coming into the space like me, it says a couple of things. 
first of all, that's in the DNA in terms of what people do in terms of customer and community service. It's in the DNA. But it also says that what we do um, is vital. So that, that, that's the first thing that we take. And so when I think about the proof points for that, sort of how we stand up in storms is a proof point. I, I think the second thing for me as I look across uh, the business and, and think about who our customers are, you know, it's no, you know, we're in the Northeast. You know, the states we, we do business in are Massachusetts, New York, uh, and Rhode Island. So that's not new. But if you take a look at that, you, if you're like me, you think about New York, you think about Manhattan, you think about Brooklyn, um, but I also think about Syracuse and Albany and Rochester and Buffalo and those type of cities. And same thing in Boston, while we, we I mean, in Massachusetts, we think about Boston and we think about Cambridge. We also have to think about places like Fitchburg and Limister and those type of things. So what that says to me is our customer base is hugely diverse. Uh, diverse politically, diverse economically, diverse socially, and diverse from a technological perspective. So the epiphany for me is in other businesses that we were doing turnarounds, we would do customer segmentation, but customer segmentation to say, which customers do we want to do business with? When we do segmentation in this industry, in our company, it's not about choosing which customers, it's about saying what do those customers need because if we do get a choice, we choose all of our customers. So all, of, all the folks in our region are our customers. And that's a huge epiphany as we think about what we need to do for our customers. So having said that, and you think about the diversity of that, the proof points for me are really what we do in terms of our energy efficiency programs. You know, so in our energy efficiency programs, all three of our states are in the top seven of states in terms of the energy efficiency productivity that we deliver for our customers. And we're incredibly proud of that. One of the journeys we've been on, we just had our leadership kickoff meeting a couple weeks ago, is really about just the day-to-day -day process and making sure, one, that all of our processes line up to, uh, to drive customer satisfaction, but we're also driving efficiencies for the benefit of customers. You know, I'm someone where the, uh, I grew up in a household that had 13 people in it. Um, and, and when I think about that, so the energy bills were important. So when I think about that, I say, you know, I, don't, I know that it can't be free, but we tell, our, we tell our team that our customers also shouldn't have to pay for waste. So that's another big thing that we drive. And then someone was up here earlier and they were talking about private and public partnerships when they were talking about this, this building. And the reality is what we do from an economic and community development standpoint is huge. As we talk to customers and we talk about how we help revitalize communities, particularly in upstate New York and other parts of Rhode Island, you know, what we do from those programs is not only important, but it's vital in terms of getting businesses started, in terms of sustainability, and in terms of turning around uh, those economies. So you know, those are huge things that we do. So as we flex forward and think about what we do, which is deliver energy, by listening to customers, we believe we, believe we bring energy to life. Now that delivery um, of energy to customers um, it's an uncertain future. There's lots of decisions to be made in terms of what that's going to look like uh, going forward. Um, five minutes? No, that means? <laughs> I will get there. So, um, so you, we think about what that means. But what I do know is I think about our customers, I think about our regulators, and I think about our uh, represented politicians. In the Northeast, they all believe in clean energy. So that's huge for us. I think the decision points that we have to make in terms of how we get there will come down to largely about customers. But again, as I think about epiphanies for me, it's about the huge role that we have to play uh, in that future as National Grid. First of all, the first thing we have to do is live up to our remit in terms of uh, reliable, safe, and efficient energy. But then that gets us a position at the table so we can be part of that debate in terms of what we deliver for our customers. And just real quickly, in the interest of time, the things that are proof points for us, some of our regulators, actually all of our regulators are fairly progressive. In New York, it's probably the most progressive one. So if you have not heard, reforming the energy vision, or REV as we call it, is one of the more progressive um, programs in the country. 
For us, what we've done with that is we set up a number of demonstration projects. So as we think about doing community and rooftop solar, we do it in neighborhoods like Fruitville and Buffalo, where they're underprivileged neighborhoods. So we can figure out going forward how we provide that for underprivileged uh, uh, customers. Because as I said before, we won't leave any customer behind. We're piloting microgrids. We've made investments. Um, uh, you've probably seen uh, where we've got the first offshore wind project. That particular project in Rhode Island, we laid the undersea cable uh, for that. And some of the investments we've made have been um, in Sunrun, so we can get smarter around residential solar and what that means for us in terms of rate cases and relationships with our regulators going forward. Um, and the last thing I'd say is we've also made investments in venture capital funds. Not because we're looking to make huge profits, but the reality is we want to be close to technology. So as we're making bets on technologies for our customers, we can be close to it going forward. It's a small sample of what we're doing. We know there's a lot more to do. We think from our regulator standpoint, we need to make sure we've got incentives lined up so we can be closer and more closely aligned with our customers' needs. We need to be flexible in terms of the financing mechanisms that we use uh, with customers. We're going to learn some of that from demonstration projects. So again, that we don't leave any customers behind. And then we also have to have a voice at the table when it comes to policy. In the Northeast, over the last three years, our electric customers have paid an extra $7 billion in their bills uh, because we don't have enough capacity for natural, ga natural, natural gas. I don't know about you, but I don't come from neighborhoods where people have an extra $7 billion. So we'll be part of that debate going forward, too. Ultimately, though, again, I, I'm, I'm part of a panel, and I'm happy to tee that up. I simply want to say for us, you know, um, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be proud of representing my colleagues at National Grid as we take our seat at the table. We believe we're a listening organization. Um, we get better every single day, but we got a long way to go. Um, and we're a listening organization that tries to put our, our money where our mouth is.